Okay, so, uh, thanks. So, so the third scenario that I'm going to talk about is looking at the uh, scenario that is a cascading of default of uh, several uh, Eurozone countries. So uh, default is one of the things that uh, we've seen some historical events uh, in the past, although that um, might be seen as a, um, not an event that has uh, happened quite um, severely. So in this scenario, we look at uh, various economic shocks we will have, and also based on the, uh, these economic shocks, we look at the exit of several um, European countries, starting with the exit of um, Italy. So one of the key uh, factors that impact the chance for default of a country is the amount of debt that um, is accumulated. And, and, and I'll and on this network, we can see the net balance uh, uh, of various countries' uh, debt exposure to each other. That is a uh, um, shows um, basically the imbalances that we can see. So in our scenarios, we will have um, three major scenarios with uh, these countries that you can see that in our largest uh, event, we are looking at 17% of uh, global uh, GDP. So, as I said, um, just to look at and give an idea of the uh, debt amount that uh, these various countries that are ranked, we can see large numbers uh, as a ratio of their uh, GDP. And with the euro area, that's, that's also um, quite increasing, and we can see, especially for uh, pigs, pigs countries, uh, which is significantly um, higher than the others. So this is just to give an idea of the, um, one of the major causes that uh, would um, initially might trigger a default. So um, this is basically an illustration from the Cities at Risk project that we have categorized um, various countries based on their um, um, threat, uh, based on their credit ratings and also we have um, basically shown the, um, the risk according to the GDP at risk measure which you saw earlier in our um, earlier presentation. So, um, so for looking at, this is, this is a um, graph showing the last 200 years of various um, defaulting countries. So. On this line, we have the uh, total number of countries that are going to default, and uh, you can see uh, some of them could have larger duration, so for that reason, it could be uh, higher. So it's, it's categorized based on um, various uh, continents. And these peak <coughs> events, as you can see, is uh, also pointing to uh, the Great Depression debt crisis and also um, emerging country debt crisis in 1920s in this area. So uh, generally, these are events that happen and um, uh, is seen historical and um, uh, some frequency in that. So again, to summarize that, in the um, last 100 years, we have seen 120 defaults um, in various countries. Obviously, most of these have been in uh, underdeveloped or emerging countries, rather, but We've also seen uh, these happening in uh, more advanced economies, or the chance that recently is picking up with that regard. Also, important thing that uh, I showed earlier, these, these things can ha also happen in cascades, that several <coughs> events happening in a, in a shorter period of time. So, uh, just to give an overview, um, this actually shows the amount of the, uh, sovereign debt in default. So it, uh, for the total global value, which it goes around 400 um, billion that we can see. So I've, sh I've uh, picked two countries like Greece and um, Argentina that during uh, two crises Argentina have, that much amount of the sovereign debt has gone into default as well as with uh, recent uh, crisis in Greece. So just a flavor of uh, probability of such events, uh, we are showing uh, uh, one in five year 
one in 50 scenario uh, looking at the five year uh, CDS uh, spread that gives us that uh, uh, probability estimation. So uh, now that I've shown some historical uh, frequencies and occurrences of various defaults, we just go to our uh, scenario. Although, I mean, during the development of the scenario, there were more chances of exit of the European countries from the Euro area. Um, uh, but at the same time, that might seem uh, a more faded uh, problem. But at the same time, all the recent uh, uh, measures taken by the European Central Bank to stabilize the Euro area, that hasn't uh, uh, helped much, according to uh, some. So how does scenario work? Yeah, we've got three phases. So we look at the hypothetical scenario of uh, it, uh, Italy's exit from your area. So in the first uh, phase, we have the change of government. So the anti-austerity um, rally is turned into demonstrations. Parliament uh, forces Renzi to uh, resign. And then we have a coalition of uh, more populous parties with uh, the other parties such as uh, Liga North, which have sort of more um, anti-European uh, views. So that, that would cause the exit of Italy, uh, basically declaring as a political uh, uh, movement, declaring uh, the exit from Euro area that would significantly cause the valuation of the um, debt. So that would cause a 50% um, devaluation in, in that region. So the, the third one, we are actually looking at the consequences of Italy's exit that would cause other uh, preferred countries to um, exit as well. So Spain, uh, followed by Portugal, uh, Ireland, and Greece will also uh, declare um, so that, that becomes actually a tr uh, um, basically trigger of the scenario. So now um, these countries have, uh, are out of Europe. Um, so these are uh, similar to other scenarios that you uh, saw earlier. Um, we have four uh, uh, key economic um, variables that we shot. And namely, um, we are looking at the devaluation of the gross debt and that has a um, basically effect on other core European countries have, which have to pick the tab and uh, increase their debt by uh, total um, um, aggregated value of that. And that would cause the, the sort of uh, contagion of that even to other countries. So again, to emphasize, um, we have in our um, scenario one, we have Five countries which exit, then uh, in scenario two, we have more stronger nations, uh, namely France and Germany, uh, um, get, getting affected by these measures, as, as you can see. And in more extreme scenario, we just increase the uh, shock uh, variables. So, as a consequence of shock to that, um, key economic variables we we'll see. Uh, various uh, depreciation, depreciation in equity prices, um, uh, increasing government bond spreads, and, and reduction in the consumer uh, um, confidence. So just to summarize some of the uh, key outcomes of such models, uh, what we can see in the inflation, uh, initially we will have some spikes in our uh, uh, in the uh, in the forecasted in inflation, then we will have, as the market moves to a more uh, pessimistic uh, sentiment, we will have a long long term da uh, downgrade, uh, long term. Uh, uh, let me look at the, the inflation, which has gone gone lower than than the initial spike. So. Um, Short-term interest rates uh, go almost to zero. Obviously, I haven't shown the longer-term one. That's, that's a different story. What we can see in the credit ratings, um, 
As you can see, countries which were directly in the scenarios, they have quite significantly been affected. Although um, other countries in the uh, core European area are also um, affected, but um, uh, countries like China, which are which probably have uh, less uh, uh, trade wars or for, uh, currency exchange uh, to the uh, euro area, have uh, you can see le less the less downgraded compared to that. But the uh, downgrades are quite significant in. Uh, those uh, key countries that were, were in the scenario. So um, again, uh, we, we can see the uh, recession severity also sort of uh, same story you can see for those uh, countries it, it's gone quite down. Uh, although for uh, uh, other countries might be not that significant, but we can see a, a global trend of um, most countries affected by uh, the shocks to our um, uh, exit of that Euro, Euro countries. So just to show the uh, final uh, uh, macroeconomic impacts, we see again the GDP at risk measure. Um, uh, it's, it's quite um, long term compared that to, the, to the previous one. So we can see the effect uh, uh, remains there for um, more than uh, three, four years, then that, that's, that's quite significant. Obviously, with the uh, more significant uh, scenarios, uh, it is higher. Um, again, just to uh, be consistent with the others, I'll just show one slide for uh, the impact on portfolios. So um, uh, the effects are a, a bit more um, uh, differentiated uh, with different uh, portfolios, but at the same time, most of them are um, affected uh, by this. Yeah, so that's it. Thanks a lot.